hello hi and welcome back to my channel in today's video we are going to learn about jetpack data store which is a part of the jetpack library we are going to see why we should use it along with an example so let's get straight into it so first things first uh, what is data store so data store as i said is a part of the jetpack library which was introduced a year and a half back i suppose so it's basically as you can see it says it is a data storage solution that allows you to store key value pairs it sounds very similar to something called shared preference if you are new to android development you might not have used it till now but there was an api in android where we use something called shared preference to share a data locally so it is similar to that but it has benefits on top of shared preference as you can see it is uh, it uses kotlin coroutines and flow to store data asynchronously consistently and transactionally basically it means that it has all the newer benefits that the kotlin is having that is the cot that is the kotlin coroutines and flow along with that the major advantage of this is that we can run this on the ui thread whereas shared preference always used to run on the main thread along with that uh, we also have support for catching errors so i guess if we are creating a new app in the modern times we should use data store over shared preference so there are two types of data stores as you can see it says preferences data store and proto data store so preferences data store is basically as i said the key value pair that we can save whereas the proto data store is something a bit complex where you can save a custom data type where you have to create a schema and then you can save it so moving forward we will see an example as to how we can use this in our application we are going to learn about the preferences data store which will give you a brief idea about what is data store and then similarly you can use the proto data store also so let's get straight into the code and see how we can actually implement this in the real time so the first things that we need to do in our project is we need to add the dependency which is this implementation android x android data store preferences and this is the version at the time of this recording so we need to add this once we have added this we can proceed to the actual code so for this example what i have done here is as you can see there are three fields a square color square size and square thickness and a save button and this is the preview of the square so just to give you an overview of what i have done here is that i have taken a card and i have given some initial value to it which is the color which is having the color as this hex code the uh, square size that is the width and height and the thickness of the border now what we want to do here is we want to use the data store preferences to store these settings in our app for example let's say if i change the hex code of the square to let's say red and square size to let's say 200 and thickness to 2 so it's this should that all these inputs should update the view of this composable and even if i close the app and restart the app the settings should persist that is the goal with this particular example so for achieving this we are using data store right so we are using data store to save each of these values to save the color size and thickness values and we are saving this in the format of a key and value pair where color will be the name of a key size and thickness will be keys and the values will be what we have entered so for doing this what we need to do first of all is we need to create a data class for this particular object for that i what i have done here is i have created a data package and i have added two files the first thing that we need to add is something called square settings which is a data class as you can see it is having three fields color size and thickness colors of type string and both the others are of integer this will take care of all the properties all the settings of this particular composable the next thing that we need to do here is we need to add a class for managing the data store right so we need to add a class which will take care of all the data related queries and that is basically saving the data and getting back the data so once we have added this data class 
we need to add another class called settings data manager this is basically a data manager class as you can see it it basically has all the required settings and properties for the data store to be implemented so here what we need to do is we need to pass the context in this particular class and we are creating a data store like this since we are using preferences data store we are calling preferences data store and please make sure that the preference is imported from this particular place and we are giving this data store name as settings data store there is a typo over here we can change it let's name it as settings data store okay after this uh, what we have done is we have taken the three keys and we've added this inside the companion object i have called these keys as square color square size and square thickness and for assigning the names we are uh, using string preferences key which basically tells that this key will hold a string value and i have given the key name as color which we are going to reference with this particular variable so basically the key name is color and we are referencing this in our code as square color similarly the key name is size we are referencing this as square size similarly the preferences key is thickness we are referencing this as square thickness just to be a bit more readable you can name this anything you want just make sure that it is consistent throughout your application so color is taking care of the string color and the integer type is for both the size and thickness so once this is done the basic setup is ready now we need to add two functions one is for saving the uh, settings and one is for getting back the settings data now going to the functions that is the saving settings function we are passing the settings as the object of type square settings which we have just created and we are calling edit and passing the lambda which is having all the values for the required keys so the key here is square color as defined here and the value is settings dot color which will be passed similarly the square size will having the value of settings dot size the square thickness will be having the value of settings dot thickness so i'm calling this particular function it will save all these values in the data store which we have named as settings underscore data store and for getting back these values we have created another function called get settings and we are calling the map lambda and we are creating an object we are creating an object basically this will return the object this function will return the object and we are creating this object of square settings since square settings is the data class and we are just simply uh, getting the values that is stored inside these keys so the key here is square color square size and square thickness so we are simply saying that if the value is undefined null just return this as the default value for color this default value for size and this default value for number that's it this is how much you have to write for this particular example we have added the initial context for the data store provided the name for the data store we have added the keys provided the preferences key for each of these keys we have created the settings for we have created the function for saving and we have created the function for getting the values and once all this is done we had simply have to just use these functions in our ui to perform to implement all these things so let's uh, move to the ui aspect of this particular example as you can see there are like three different fields one button and one square which is having the values for the square color the dimension of the square and the border width border thickness so what we need to do here is we need to first of all create a late init variable for the settings data manager which we will initialize inside the on create function also we need a mutable live data for fetching the values for fetching the values so uh, since uh, you if you remember that in the settings data manager we are calling this function which will return back a flow right so when since we are returning a flow so we need to call it inside the global scope or you can basically say we need to call this inside a coroutine scope but for the sake of this example we are using the global scope but i would highly recommend you not to use global scope but to use the local scope 
create a view model and use it inside the view model scope. So we will have a setting saved variable of mutable live data type and we will basically uh, look for whatever the data that is saved. So we are simply we will call get settings and add the catch block to it and if there is any error it will be printed in, by calling print stack trace. Otherwise we will call the collect function to collect the data. So it will return back the square settings object. So we will simply call post value and pass the object that is getting returned so that this will be updated. Okay. So as soon as we update this, as soon as we receive the value, it will update and it will update the value at all the places where we are using this, right? So what I have done here is I have created a composable called settings input, which is this entire thing, as you can see in the right hand side. It takes three different parameters, the context, the settings data manager and the settings saved, which is the mutable live data. And inside the settings input, what we are doing here is just to keep it very beginner friendly. I have used multiple uh, states. The first three states is for color, size and thickness, which is these three fields for these three fields. So once we have the values inside these three fields, we will click on the save button and we will call the save settings function to save these values in the data store. So for these three fields, we are using these three states, color state, size state and thickness state. And if you scroll down, I use a column, three different text fields for color, size and thickness. Okay, pretty straightforward. You can add anything you want. You can customize this accordingly. Just for the sake of this example, I have kept it pretty simple. And once the button is clicked, what we need to do here is we need to save these settings. We need to save all these values inside the data store. So again, we are using global scope, but if you remember, as I said, don't use this, don't use global scope. I'm just using for the sake of this example, please use view model scope. We are calling the save settings function. We are passing the object with all the values that is saved inside the three states. Okay. So now clicking the button will save the values, save the settings in the, inside the data store. But what we need to do here is we need to accordingly update the, the view of this particular card. At the bottom, there is a card which is having this as the background color, this as the dimension and this as the thickness. And these values are according to these three states, size, saved state, thickness, saved state and color, saved state. And I have defined these at the very top. You can create three different states also. You can just create simply one state as the type of the square settings object. Now these three states, the value will be updated by observing the settings saved multiple live data, which we have passed over here. So once the value is received to this, the observable will be triggered and we will receive the value and we will update these values accordingly. And hence these states will also be updated over here. Now let's say once we have saved the value, we should be able to see the updated square over here and even if we restart the application we should again be able to see the previously saved value so let's see if it is working or not let's add uh, many color any values over here. let's say let's make it as red size as let's say 200 and thickness as 2 and click on save so as you can see it changed the background color to red the thickness the border thickness to 2 and the dimension to 200. Let's change it again to something else. Let's use 300, let's say 300 and let's say the four. So as you can see, we change it to yellow with 300 as the dimension that is 300 cross 300. As you can see width is 300, height is 300. The width as three and the color as whatever the value, whatever the export we have given over here. Now let's simply close the application and open it again and it should be persistent in the application. So as you can see, it is still there, which would not be the case if we have not used data store. Otherwise the, the value or the data won't be persistent in the application locally. So earlier we used to do this using something called shared preference as I talked about it earlier. 
but with the modern approach we should be using this data store since it is built on top of coroutine scope and we are using flow and as you can see we can add the threads accordingly so it's better that we use data store in the modern applications so that's pretty much it for this particular example in the next video we are going to learn about room which is also a library of jetpack which is also used for saving data locally but we can save much more complex data with that so that's pretty much it for this particular video please like the video and subscribe the channel if you found this particular video useful and do leave a comment in down below to give me a feedback you will find all these code in the description so you can go through it so thank you thank you for staying till the end and we'll see you in the next video